What's up, everybody? Good morning. It's another day, another dollar, man. Thanks for tuning in to another episode with me, Death I Bring. Now, uh, you know, the title of this video said that I went to prison last night, and I definitely did. Uh, I'm Luckily, it was only in my dreams. I don't know if it was me always talking about prison every day. But a lot of times I do have these crazy dreams where I really was back in prison uh, facing different situations. It's usually the craziest situations. Um, I do know that some of my worst nightmares are going, uh, I'll go to court and I'll get a life sentence. And then I'll wake up and I'll be like, oh my god, thank god that was just a dream, you know? Uh, I get those nightmares all the time, and it is really scary, man. Anyways, uh, before we get into this dream and telling you, I'm going to tell you about my second time going to prison because this is this dream was about me in this receiving place called Powhatan, and it was definitely the, one of the most dangerous prisons I've been in. Uh, you know, I was in Greensville. This place was huge, and it was filled with killers. But this receiving camp called uh, Powhatan was definitely one of the scariest prisons I've ever been into. And I'm going to tell you all about it. Well, first things first, before I get into that, uh, I want to tell y'all, you know, my name on YouTube, someone uh, left a comment yesterday and said, your name is not really that uh, appealing. Okay. I know that, man. I really do, and I love to hear someone else say it, because I really don't like... I mean, I love the name Death I Bring. Don't get me wrong, okay? Uh, it was, When I first made this YouTube channel last year, November, I didn't think I was going to be creating anything, okay? All I thought was, okay, I'm going to stream some of my PS4 games for my homeboys to see. And that's that. That was all I was going to do. Uh, and I was doing it. And it wasn't until like a month and a half ago that I started to want to uh, talk about prison. I saw other people talking about prison. I didn't really like how some people were. Um, so I came to try to perfect the prison game, okay? So with that being said, I'm going to be changing my channel name as soon as they allow me to. They said I can't change it within until 90 days from now. That was like... When I first started making videos, so I made a bunch of different names and just seen how it looked. And I got stuck with this death I bring exclamation mark. Trust me, I know it's not appealing. Uh, if y'all got any ideas, you know, I got like 1,100 subscribers. Come on, man, give me some feedback. If you got a good enough idea, I might just use that sucker, man. If you don't mind, I got some really good ideas. Uh, but starting next year, it's going to be a new channel name, something more appealing to people and giving out more information on what my channel might be, a better description. And you know what? If you come up with a good one, I'll give you a freaking tattoo gun. Anyways, enough of that. Let's get right into um, this prison story. Let's get right into this dream I had, okay? Well, I'm not going to describe the dream. It brought to my attention, I'm going to describe going into prison for the first day my second time and I you would think that it would be easier because you know the ropes and I thought it would be easier as well because I knew the ropes but that ain't the case the second time was harder than the first and I got in a lot more trouble uh, in the beginning not because I wanted to but because it was just put upon me so the second time you know I was in uh, Virginia Beach jail this time and I you know, I was really relaxed in my time in Virginia Beach Jail. But, uh, you know, 2 in the morning, I was ready to go to prison. I was ready, man. And 2 in the morning or 3 in the morning, they woke me up. They said, hey, pack your bags. You're going to prison. Uh, you know, so I started doing somersaults. I started giving out food and coffee left and right because you can't take that with you. Your radio, they take all of that when you get to receiving. So I got into this prison called Powhatan, and you ever seen the movie Shawshank Redemption? This place was the closest to it, okay? No lie, 100% truth. This place was freaking crazy, man. It was creepy. It looked like a castle. 
I went into this receiving, and of course, you know, they do the basic rundown. They give you a haircut and buzz your head. Well, I ain't got to get my head buzzed. I stay with a buzzed head. And, you know, they cut off your facial hair, take all the stuff that you had, and, you know, you're you're in your street clothes, which is very weird because it always feels like you're going home, but really you're just going to a different home. They put you in your street clothes when you leave the jail and all this, that, and the third. And when I got out of jail and I went over to the prison, got in the situation, they sent me into, you know, the cell blocks. And the cell blocks had three tiers, uh, three floors. It looked like... It looked like a coliseum in there, man. It was huge, filled with people. And it was really, really, really distressful, man, because it was just wild, wild people. And you could tell right off the bat that there was probably going to be some situations where you might get into some serious problems. Anyway, so when I went to this uh, receiving camp called Powhatan, I was magically, there was hundreds of cells, and I was magically put in probably the worst cell possible. I mean, it was horrible. I went into the prison, and went to the cell, and there's this white guy, I don't even remember his name, and uh, we became pretty close. He was actually a tattoo artist as well, and he always, this dude was crazy, man. He hid his tattoo motor in his butt every day. I'm like, how do you sleep with that in your butt, man? That's crazy. <laughs> Anyways, so yeah, he did it every day. And I was like, I would never get a tattoo from you. And this guy was just grimy, grimy, nasty, dirty white dude, man. He was he was wild. He was he was cool. And he had plenty of coffee. That was one thing I love. He didn't have no food, but he had plenty of coffee. And you know I love that coffee, man. Anyways, so, yeah, he had that coffee, we were drinking coffee, this, that, and the third, and not only that, but, you know, when you get to receiving camp, they take everything from you, so there's no batteries in there, man. You would only have to get, ba you could get batteries from this guy called a cadre. Cadre is someone that lives there forever. Uh, uh, receiving camp, people come and go on the regular. They're getting leveled, their levels taken up, so they know which level prison to go to uh but these cadres they stayed there the whole time they're like the workers for that compound and they would give us batteries but they never gave people batteries because people come and go so this cell that i was in was the only means of fire as soon as i came in there the guy was popping there's a light in the top of my cell that was broken okay it was broken and he's been uh popping the wires together to get um, fire for everyone. Hundreds of people in that cell block. And you know all them gang members from any gang, every gang you could think of, came up into that thing. Except for MS-13. No one came up from them. They came up to our cell asking him to light a cigarette. Three days after I got there, guess what? It was his time to move on out. So guess who's stuck with this freaking fire lighting situation that's right yours truly death and you know uh these guys were a little on edge about me because i'm covered in tats i remember the first night i went in there i took a shower i said okay i gotta walk out the i'm covered in tats already for my first bid so most people walk out the shower with their shirt on and boxers and that's it not me i walk right out with uh, my towel around my waist, no shirt on, just my shower shoes, my chest puffed out, and I was letting everyone read everything on my body, my billboard that I got on my body, okay, letting them read and know what time it is. So I was a little off settle about that, maybe I shouldn't, maybe I should, but I wanted people to respect me, okay, know that I've done time before, you ain't gonna get over on me. Everyone knows they're a little on edge about me, but, you know, after talking, it seems like every time someone talks to me, they always get so comfortable with me. I don't know what it is, but it's not until I talk to them. That's why, you know, a lot of people, I like to stay ghost mode, which means I don't like to talk to anyone because I'd rather them be on suspense and not know anything about me. But once people start talking to me, they realize, oh, man, this guy's cool as hell. You know, I'm not scared of him. He's a cool dude. I can kick it with him every day. Well, that's how it went. 
Uh, after a couple gang members, it was specifically the Bloods, they were talking to me and kicking it with me. Uh, they they said, look, man, you got to start making fire. We need that fire now. Uh, what am I going to say, no? I'm not going to say no. I told, I tried to say no by saying I don't know how to do it, man. I'm scared of electricity. But really, I knew how to do it. I knew how to make fire out of that broken light bulb. But it didn't work. You know, my little plan of acting dumb and not knowing how to do it didn't work he said well man uh this that and third his name was i forget his name he was an og in the block he said look you got to get it going now you know right now or else there's probably gonna be some problems and you know what i ain't have no homeboys in there i didn't have no one so i had to man i ain't have no backup uh, so I went ahead and acted like I didn't know what I was doing, but I ended up lighting it for him. And that was probably the biggest mistake I ever had to do because, like clockwork, okay, I had people coming from every floor to my cell asking for a light. So I made a, uh, a, a incense, a prison incense. It's toilet paper rolled up real long that you would light it and it would burn really slow throughout the day. And I would keep that lit hanging out my window all day and night that way I didn't have to keep messing with that freaking light bulb that was one of the worst things I had to go through was lighting these cigarettes for everyone you couldn't even re I couldn't even relax man and not to mention you know before I started lighting these cigarettes within those three days of going in there I saw people get jumped in their own cells random white guys and see I'm trying to tell you I'm not trying to scare you all white guys but Unfortunately, in prison, a lot of white guys get taken advantage of, man. They really do. Uh, they're usually never in gangs, and if they are in a gang, they're, their gangs just, it's not like, they don't roll together, man. They just are too scared to roll as a unit. And that's why uh, black guys are so powerful in prison. Their gangs are legit. They roll together. I, you know, I've seen white supremacy gangs and stuff like that. In prison, they don't roll together, man. I mean, they do, but when stuff hits the fan, it's like they just let their homeboys go to the wayside, man. What's wrong with that? Like, why don't white guys stick together more? I mean, I'm not trying to be on some racial stuff, but unfortunately, on the East Coast, white guys get taken advantage and beat up more than any other race in prison, okay? Now, I'm not talking about child molesters or stuff like that, but... I'm just being honest. The majority of people getting beat up in prison are white guys. But, you know, there's a you know, 60% chance that that white dude can hold his own. But most of the prisons I went to, the gangs, that white gangs that they rolled with, they just didn't stick together good. And there's a lot of fear in their hearts. And you can't have fear in your heart, man. Anyways, so, you know, I was making all these lighters for these people. I was lighting up their cigarettes. And, you know, I would, I was just really trying to stay away from trouble, man. So I was lighting these cigarettes for him. And I was smoking with them. I told him, I said, yeah, I'm taking a couple hits off. I would smoke, a, I would take a good two, three drags as I'm lighting it. You know, lighting it. So I'm really pretty much smoking for free. You know, I wasn't really stressed about it. The only thing was, I like to do my own time. I don't want no one telling me when I have to light them a cigarette. Anyways, it was stressful. Uh, but what really made this prison scary, it was literally like, it was a jungle, man. A concrete jungle, okay? Hey, that, that was also a name that I thought about my channel. Concrete jungle? I don't know. Anyway, these guys, man, I'll never forget it. I told a story back in one of my older videos about how I saw something I shouldn't have seen. Well, I was in the shower in this compound, and it's just three showers in this big room open room no walls or nothing it's just a big room and i was showering up i was soaping up and this white dude man he got beat up so bad by four guys i don't know what gang they're in but they're obviously in the gang they beat him up so bad he was laying there you know you don't even want to step in the shower without your shower shoes and this guy was in the drain face down okay where everybody's little babies go and all that stuff, you know, pubes, everything. He was laying face down, unconscious, mouth open, in this drain. Water spraying all over him, soap all over his body still. And, you know, they were beating him up in the shower while the shower's running. So they're getting soaking wet, beating this guy up. Man, 
I didn't know what to do. I just grabbed my stuff. I was still soaked up, man. I was I quickly hurried, tried to rinse as much off as I could. And I walked out, man. I'm not gonna I was worried about the guy, man. He was really he was really messed up. But I had to go. Sorry. I had to go. That's why I said don't ever be a good Samaritan because I'll get you messed up too. It's sad to say. I left the cell and then I saw this guy the next day, his whole face was black and blue. He was a redhead white guy. His whole face was black and blue and um, he was so terrified. They took all his food later on that day as well. He said they said that it's gonna keep on happening because he he did the mess up. He messed up. He he don't know nothing about these people and he's buying a hundred some dollars in canteen the first time he goes. He's an idiot. Okay, there's always someone watching and wanting what you got. So yeah, he he learned the hard way. After that, he stopped buying canteen altogether. He would buy can he would buy stamps and cosmetics because they stole all his cosmetics while he was getting beat down in that shower. Uh, but he came out the next day black and blue, and no one ever even caught it. You know, the police never even looked at it. There's so many people in there. You know, it was like freaking Shawshank Redemption, straight up. And this is when I saw a tactic that I haven't seen before. You know, people going to Gang members going to cells with a bag and asking them for their food. And people were just willingly giving it up. So I've seen a lot of tactics that I haven't seen in any prison before in this prison. And it was very, very crazy, man. So with all this being said, I was praying to get up out of there as soon as possible, man. Because honestly, I was really worried about my own safety. And I've it's very rare that I worried about my own safety I mean, before I get to a place, I worry about my safety. But once I'm there for like three or four days, I'm good. I feel good. Well, not with this place. Every day seemed like I was getting closer to the danger zone. Every single day, I got closer to probably getting my teeth smashed out. Because, see, a problem with me is, once I get agitated enough, I don't care what gang you're in, how many people you're with. I'm a snap, bruh. I am going to snap. I have a breaking point. I can't hold my composure sometimes. It's not me. It's something else inside of me that snaps, okay? So that's why I felt like every day was getting closer to the point where I'm going to snap and I'm not going to be able to hold my own because I snapped. I was tired of these guys always asking me for a lighter or anything, you know, and they kept asking me about helping make a tattoo gun you know, and I told them, I said, I don't know anything about a tattoo gun. And they still, they still kept hassling me about it. Random people, man. I was really getting worried about my own mind state. And not only that, I couldn't use a phone. We were locked down all the time. I was using the phone. Every time I called home, no one answered. And you only get one call. It was really hard, man. I was really going crazy in that place. And not to mention my cell was so crazy that, look... I peeled the paint one spot on my cell. I peeled the paint, and there was drawings underneath the paint. So what did I do? Man, I peeled the whole cell. The whole cell underneath the paint was covered and littered with naked women drawings and gang signs. Man, it was so cool, though. I would peel a piece of tape, uh, paint off the wall, and I was like, whoa, this guy's an artist. So, you know, it was pretty cool that I, could, I was doing something to kill my time, which was peeling paint paint peeling but the stuff under the murals underneath that paint was really amazing yeah the second time going to prison was definitely scarier than the first okay it definitely was um that's just for the uh receiving part the second the the main prison that i went to on my second time it was a cakewalk i literally had no problems at all and i was really just laid back, having a decent time for being in prison, okay? But that receiving, man, it was terrifying. And you got to re realize, receiving has every level of prisoner in it, okay? That's where they go to get classified into a level branch, okay? And these guys are level fives, level ones. All of them are together in this receiving camp. So it was very, very terrifying, to see all these crazy freaking dudes running around. So, not all the time is going to be an easy time. And not to mention, uh, going in the second time, I had a wife and kids. Yeah, 
That makes it so much harder, man. When I first went, I didn't have no kind of obligations to the streets. The second time going, I had wife and kids, and it was rough, man. Always wondering if they're all right, if they got enough food in the house, trying to get a hold of them to say goodnight to my kids. It was very, very stressful, man. I was losing it. I probably my hairline probably receded because of that in that time in prison. So don't ever think that just because you've been to prison before does not mean you're going to have an easier time. My second time going was definitely harder than my first. Anyways, I hope y'all enjoyed that quick little story, man. It was a dream I had last night about going to prison and I was in Powhatan Penitentiary and it was definitely a scary situation, man. The whole time of being there. I've seen some serious people get beat up. And and remember, don't take it personally, y'all white guys out there that might be watching my channel. You know, I'm white too. Okay, I'm mixed. Colombian and white. But, um, that was a problem on the East Coast that I've seen. White guys didn't stick together, man. They didn't. They might say they stuck together. They might tattoo all of them Thor tattoos and Viking tattoos and stuff all over them and Nazi tattoos all over them, but when it came down to it, they didn't stick together. And that's why I like the West watching like uh, West Coast documentaries and stuff because it seems as though in the West Coast, the white guys are way more respected than on the East Coast. They stick together, man. So it's very it, it, it's a different culture change when you come from the East to the West. And don't take it personally. I'm not trying to attack y'all when I say that. I'm just being honest. White guys did not stick together here on the East Coast ever, anywhere I went. So yeah, that was the case. Uh, and like I said, you know, I'm going to be changing a new leaf in the end of this year as soon as they let me change my name. Hey, leave me some comments, man. I really want to hear your input. What would be a cool prison name? I'm not saying I'm going to use it. I'd like to hear what y'all have to say. And you know what, if, like I said, if y'all do, if someone does come up with a good one, and I really like it, and I ask you if I can use it, hey, I'm going to give you something in return, man. So, uh, be on the lookout for that, and I want to thank y'all for joining me this morning. I feel like I'm reading a newspaper to y'all every morning. I try to do something in the morning and at night. Sometimes I don't get to it. And uh, also, you know, follow me on Twitch, man. I live stream. I try to do one every night, even if it's just for an hour. I live stream, play video games at night because I am a video gamer by heart. Anyways, man, always fear prison. Always fear it because there is always going to be some crazy dudes running around prison wanting to be the head honcho. And they're waiting for the next week person to show their head honcho-ness on, okay? Just remember that. Until the next time, I love all y'all. Thank everyone who's been liking and subscribing to my channel and leaving that feedback. And always remember, man, I know I said it already one time. Fear prison. Fear it. Really fear it. It is someplace that will drive you insane and will cause you to think crazily. The rest of your life, man. I mean, I dream and have nightmares about this place, okay? It is nowhere, no place for any man. Till the next time, death I bring. Boah!